Yeah, I'm just glad to be here. Um, all right, it's getting towards the end of the day, um, so I thought I'd start my presentation with some questions, also to help me do some research as I formulate the rest of the presentation in my head. So who here is a JavaScript developer? Raise your hands. All right, great, so I'm in the right place. Um, okay, who here works uh, as a developer on a team with more than five developers on it? All right. Uh, now keep your hands up if you work um, on a team between five and 30 developers. Awesome, just give me a moment. Uh, you are all the people that I want to talk to after this um, because my talk is actually about uh, engineers as makers and this is something that comes out of um, my current role which is uh, VP of engineering at Social Tables. Um, we're a DC based uh, event planning software company and uh, we have five developers now, uh, just about to be six. Um, and so something that I'm thinking about a lot as uh, a first time engineering manager um, is how to, how to best use um, these talented people on, on my team and to continue to grow and build that. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm a self-taught programmer. I put that in quotes because so many people have helped me along the way as mentors. Um, and as, as peers learning alongside with me, but that's what people say about themselves is that they're self-taught, so I just put that there. Um, and uh, a little bit of color for this presentation is that I was actually a former business analyst for a client services firm. So while right now I'm working at a product company that uh, does you know, B2B sales, um, I have sat in client offices before doing uh, project plans um, and project management and, and scoping. So about this talk, well, it's actually really simple. Um, it's about getting from point A to point B. Um, and in this particular case, I'm gonna define point A as just having people. Uh, people are your raw human resources, um, the talent that'll get you places. So uh, point B here is, is product. Um, and we're all JavaScript developers since um, you all raised your hands. And so products really here is like software applications that people use. Uh, and I'll just throw in a little bit of a, um, a refinement on that. So products that other people actually want, uh, it's kind of a key piece, especially if you're trying to make money. So very simply, I just try to break down products into the simplest things that I know about them um, for when, I, when I'm trying to get to point, from point A to point B, and that's a design and code. And what that really means is that we've got designers and engineers and I like to keep those separate. I know there are people out there that can do both engineering and designing. Um, I'm thinking that's like less than 10%, less than 5% of people really do both those things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that those are two separate people in most places. Um, and then flushing out the other side, um, you know, products that other people want, well then we're talking about customers. Um, and keep that in mind because customers is really important later on. Um, so, you know, these are some typical engineering responsibilities. I mean, I pulled these words off of, like, you know, job pages. Uh, you see them all the time. Um, you know, typically front end, back end. Uh, most of the time, you know, you're hiring for one or two of those. There's also testing, QA, DevOps, all sorts of specialties. Um, and then, you know, in some companies, you've got one person doing all of these. Other places, you've got a lot more, um, specialization. And since we're at a JavaScript conference, uh, you know, we use Node.js, which I think is amazing because automatically you can have people do back end and front end pretty easily. Uh, I know there's caveats to that, but really it's not that much of a difference to take someone who just knows client side JavaScript well and have them do server side code. So, you know, for social tables, it's really about doing all these things um, and everyone doing all these things. Well, that seems like a lot, right? But what if we added all these other things that I've highlighted in green? Project management, feature prioritization, UI, UX, and new product development. Well, you think at most places these are, th these are job functions that other people do. Um, at social tables and at other startups that I, I think might adopt this role, there's a lot of blending that happens. And I think this is kind of a philosophy that I've adopted as I've been thinking more and more about this, that I really want to preserve engineers as makers. I really want engineers to be thinking about the problems that their customers are having. I really want to think engineers to think very deeply about how to solve those problems and owning it, owning 
the, the whole pipeline from kind of concept to finished product. And of course, there's a lot of teamwork involved in that. But that leaves the question, how? So I think this is the point where things get kind of unclear. Well, I believe it comes down mostly to this. A direct line to customers. So the link between engineers and customers has to be strong. Uh, it has to be the engineer uh, kind of understanding the, the, the problem domain of the customer and kind of understanding where they're coming from. And again, I'm, coming, I'm talking about B2B sales, but I, hopefully this applies to anyone who's working at a services company or working in a consumer uh, product, um, because your customer is usually not you um, if you're the engineer. Uh, and so here's a, an example of uh, what we, we've done and we like to do is uh, we actually, um, this is a picture of Rami here who's actually in the audience, one of my teammates. Um, so we actually go to industry events. And like I said, we're an event planning company, so we get to go to lots of events where we see our customers all the time. And we demo our product in front of them. We use our product with them. Um, and so uh, here's a picture of Rami and a, a couple of our um, other teammates just at an event um, mingling. Um, and here's another one of my favorites. Uh, it's it's uh, taking turns on customer support. So I know there's some people from Olark around here. Yeah, <laughs> I love Olark. Um, it's it's always a it's either really funny, but it's 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 really funny to interact with customers sometimes. So I'm just gonna read this out. Um, uh, so there's a customer. They just made a diagram in social tables. They opened the PDF and closed it out on accident. Um, where did it go? She here she asks. Um, and then Jake on my team says, hi there, the PDF is probably still on your computer in some sort of downloads folder. I see you're using Google Chrome on Windows. Could you hit Control J for me? And then the user says, oh my god, it's there. Um, what, a, you know, what an eye-opening experience to see that oh, these people uh, you know, aren't actually that savvy with computers, let alone your products. So you need to make sure that you keep that in mind when you're building something. Um, so thank you, Olark, for pr providing that like day-to-day -day, uh, laughter and also uh, making that line to, to customers. So I'm sensing like a lot of kind of like silence here. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's the content, but I really think this is kind of a, a cool place to stop for a second and just say like, and, and hopefully ask uh, if anyone else out there has any ideas about how engineers have interacted with the customers. Does anyone have like a, an example of something they've seen before? No one? <laughs> Just directly on Twitter? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, if they, if they tweet at you and they have a problem or anything like that, definitely. So YouTube videos and then they interact Oh, really? Wow. So a video response. Oh, that's great. All right. Um, yeah, so I think there's, there's plenty of things that you can do out there. Um, this is just a few, but um, like going to meet your customers in person and training them on your product, um, reading industry blogs and books, uh, it's, it's um, a great way to kind of understand where your customers are coming from. Um, visiting them, and ultimately it's really just about building relationships with them. So um, I have a couple of customers that I've just talked to over the last couple of years and continue to. So whenever I have an idea, I just shoot them an email and ask, what do you think about this? Is this something that you actually have a problem with? Um, and you know, I talked about some of the other things that, that I hope engineers will take some ownership of. And one of those I think that's really important is project management. Um, so here's uh, an example of, of a simple project plan that uh, someone on my team put together for, you know, we do this every once in a while for like bigger projects. It's like, you know, anything that's going to take more than a few weeks. Um, and so we've got, you know, things like, yeah, stakeholders here. So we've got our, our head of just like talking to the customers again directly and figuring out what their needs are. Um, the reason why I think project, project management and having a project plan done by an engineer is kind of cool is because you can start uh, actually going directly into user stories and proposed architecture, uh, going into sort of design considerations even from like the front end point of view. 
Uh, so you know, what, what templating engine are you going to use? Uh, what database tables do you need? Uh, these are things that the engineer really knows best. So why not have them jump in and uh, do that from, from the very beginning of the project? Um, I talked before about uh, engineers and designers. And, uh, and I think this is where, uh, like, when you talk about user interface and user experience, which is kind of the next thing that I think engineers can be good at, um, I found that design needs, visual design needs, uh, tend to be very spiky over time. So when you are releasing a product, you have a lot of design needs. Uh, you need to have a lot of thought put into exactly how it's going to look, um, sort of get a good baseline of aesthetic out there, um, also figure out some basic interactions, um, like drag and drop versus uh, point and click or keyboard-based interaction. Um, these are things where a designer really needs to spend a ton of time and your design need to, needs to spend a ton of time. Between these major, major iterations and redesigns, um, I think engineers can go and come in and uh, actually come up with new features on their own, um, probably with conjunction of the designer, but uh, this is something that engineers can be pretty good at if they pay attention to what they're doing very closely. Um, so they can actually code the UI of, you know, if it's just uh, another functionality, another, another button um, that already has styling, uh, they can come in and figure that out without much help. So I did say that I was going to talk about some pitfalls. Uh, and um, I think there are really three ones that I can think of. Uh, number one, how does it scale? So I said I'm part of an engineering team of five people. Our startup uh, is not that old. It's about two, three years old, and it has like 35 employees now. Uh, that's not that big. So how are you going to take this model and, and scale it out? Um, number two, uh, engineers are ultimately responsible for executing and building code. So isn't this a lot to ask for on top of that? And number three, what if engineers just don't want to think about these things? So I'll try to answer them. And I actually, this is something that I, I'm going to say is a work in progress, and I'm learning as I go. So I uh, really would love to hear other people's thoughts afterwards. But um, number one, how does it scale? Well. It comes down to also great communication. I think communication is one of the things that I always look for for um, people that I'm thinking about hiring on for the team. Um, because uh, when you don't get to have that much um, direct interaction with the customer, I think that's going to naturally happen over time. It's going to get harder. Um, your best line of defense against that is having great relationships with the other departments in your company. So sales, marketing, and customer support are the ways are you know, in our, inside of our company are the ones that uh, always have a direct line to the customer in the industry. So having great relationships with those departments is going to give you um, the ability to scale out that, that direct line. Um, and another thing that I think this is actually kind of more standard, to be honest, um, is, is dividing by product lines or customer segments. Um, I chose this too. I think there's other ways you can divide. Uh, but the point is that you need to divide um, and, having, and have small teams. Um, and this is something we're trying out now where uh, we have product lines and we have a uh, lead engineer um, taking on one of the big project, projects and products coming out. Um, and I think that's a good way to scale as well. Um, and then as far as isn't this a lot to ask for, well, yeah, it is. That's really my answer to that is that, yes, it is. Um, and that kind of just leads into number three, really. Uh, so, you know, engineers wanting to think about these things because they have to want to do it, um, myself included. It comes down to culture. It comes down to um, what you stand for as an engineering team. And if you stand for people who want to make things, who want to start projects from beginning to end, who want to conceptualize and build, um, those are the people that will do well in this kind of environment. Um, it's not just taking orders from you know, having a completely mocked up PSD uh, and every little step along the way um, spelled out for you. So you know, our culture is about taking chances. Our culture is about failing fast and, um, and stretching your abilities and wanting to, talk, uh, wanting to expand, I guess, what you'd call um, 
your typical day-to-day -day engineering role. Um, so just quickly touching on what this framework means for other functions. Um, I really believe that product managers, designers, um, dedicated QA uh, in this environment actually have an even greater potential to, to be um, really high leverage uh, added, um, added teammates because you know, when you have engineers that can, can, can help out, think of, help think of um, product needs, when you have engineers can, that can help with UI, UX, when you have engineers that can test their own code and each other's code, um, it makes their jobs more about adding value and business value. And so you can probably have one designer um, scale out to, to you know, work on multiple product lines, uh, for example. Um, and then I just have a final thought, because I've been talking basically about engineers being really cross-functional. And I see this kind of happening down the road, um, even now, um, where, where people can have room to be cross-functional. I think this is something that I, I will continue to be a trend. Uh, I hope it's a trend. Um, and specifically with people um, who are not in engineering roles, uh, learning to do basic engineering like, role, like responsibilities, I guess. So some examples of this are salespeople making like lead scoring algorithms. You can do this in Salesforce. You can figure out who you need to contact first. Um, that takes a basic, it, I wouldn't really, I don't know if it's coding per se, but it's, it's thinking in that way. Um, marketers building pages in Unbounce. This has saved my team so much time. Like whenever you need a new page, like it's just gonna look just like the last page except it needs new content. So now we have all that marketing stuff in Unbounce, which you just swap, it's just, just you swap it in. Um, and you can change it however you want. You can A-B test, so we don't have to touch it. Um, and it looks good. Uh, designers can leverage rapid prototyping tools. Uh, we've been doing this for our latest mobile app um, where you can actually see it work uh, it's not, you know, coded in, in Objective-C, it's not coded in HTML5, it's just you click a button and then, then the next screen unfolds and you really get a sense of how it's going to work. Um, and then, you know, even customer support these days on our team, uh, in our company, has uh, the ability to, to send out automated surveys um, to be able to code their HTML emails with surveys built into them. Uh, which I think is really great because uh, you know it, it's them not needing to rely on us once again. So that's really it for me. Um, I wanted to say, give this talk as more of a, a discussion starter, so I would love to talk more, especially those people who kept their hands up. Um, so thank you, uh, thank you for bearing with me. I know it's getting late. I probably some of you probably got stuck in the rain as well and got in at 4 a.m. So. I appreciate the attention. Thank you very much.